Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this webinar. I just want to check if you guys are able to hear me. Okay, so we are already late by 10 minutes. I was just waiting for more people to join and didn't want to start it before. So we'll be starting now. People can join as and when um, they're able to. So today we'll be covering about branding and personal branding fundamentals. So who is this useful for? Branding can be useful uh, for businessmen both working in b2b that is business to business segment as well as business to customer segments and personal branding is really important for professionals like um, doctors artists photographers even if you are a life coach then personal branding is very important for you if you are a student who is actually looking at a career opportunity tomorrow then um, nowadays the hr um, even if it comes for a campus recruitment is not just looking at your resume they also want somebody who is very proactive um, and who exude the same level of um, interest not just uh, in college activities but also in extracurricular activities so you can also brand yourself as a student so that you can improve your career opportunities so to start with, let us start with an introduction about our company, Branding by Pixels. We are a visual content and digital marketing company. Uh, it was co-founded in the year 2017 by Ravi Varma, uh, my spouse, and Sirisha Ayanapurpu, which is me. We are a husband and wife duo, um, but now I am actively managing the brand on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, Branding by Pixels is the most unique digital marketing company in Hyderabad as it has its own in-house content, visual content team. And no other digital marketing um, in India generally has an in-house visual content team. Why is visual content important in digital marketing? Because all of digital marketing is moving to original content. So um, content which is specifically created for the brand, content which actually projects the products of the brand, uh, those are some examples of original content. And that is where our expertise lies. We can actually create the visual content and we'll be using that in the digital marketing efforts for our clients. Coming back to me, my introduction, I'm Siri Shaina Purpu. I have been into IT for over 10 years. I've worked across uh, various software implementations, right from Oracle ERP. And uh, my last IT tool was a sales performance management tool called as Calidus, which is a market leader. I've completed my MBA in finance and marketing from IPE which is in Osmania University. I quit uh, my six-figure job with Deloitte, which was my last company, to pursue uh, digital marketing on a full-time basis. I manage digital marketing for uh, my husband's brand. He's a professional photographer, so we have another brand called as Truly Candid by Ravi Varma. So I manage uh, the digital marketing efforts at his brand. I manage the digital marketing efforts at uh, my own brand, which is Branding by Pixels. And I also, I'm also actively uh, involved in creating um, and implementing digital strategies for our clients. Okay, now that we are done with the introductions, let us get into the core modules. So we'll start with branding. Then we will understand more about what is branding, how do you actually brand your company or your products, and then we'll get into personal branding. So this is a two-fold um, presentation. Coming to what is branding. So the bookish example, whenever we start in India with some concept, we first go through the bookish, uh, bookish definition. And the bookish definition for branding is the process involved in creating a unique name and image for a product in the consumer's mind, mainly through advertising campaigns with a consistent theme. So if you look at the underlined keywords here, it is talking about a unique name and an image in the consumer's mind. So most of us um, entrepreneurs, we are um, 
so very uh, drawn into our own ideas that whenever we launch a product or whenever we try to launch a company, we think about what we um, think of the brand by itself. What do we want to communicate? What do we want the product to be? What do we want the company to be? But branding is about creating an image in your consumer's mind. So what does the customer think about you is what branding is all about. It is not about from an entrepreneur perspective, but it is more from a consumer's uh, perspective. So branding can be created using visual aids like logos, tagline etc so um, and why is it used it is used to create a consistent customer experience across the globe not just in the country of origin so when we talk about cons consistent customer experience that gives a um, level of comfort to the customer that he can trust your brand uh, he can trust your products no matter where he buys it so that is where branding actually comes into picture now let us talk about brand values so when we talk about branding, um, firstly, there are some brand values that are being attached to the brand, right? So um, brand values are nothing but what comes to your mind as a customer when you look at the brand logo. So um, there have been some very famous logos that whenever we look at them, we know what brand they represent. And we also know what that company is representative of. Right. So that is one of the core brand values. Next are the same words that you think when you look at the brand being briefed with the agency used in brand building. So as an entrepreneur, whenever you build a brand, you have certain parameters that you want to attribute to it. You may want your brand to represent quality. You may want your brand to represent um, comfort. You may want your brand to rep represent availability. Right. But is, is it is the same communication being passed to the customer as well? Does the customer also think in the same lines that you as an entrepreneur are thinking about? If yes, then your branding exercise has been a huge success. And branding is, a, branding is not just undertaken by the uh, entrepreneur himself. There have been some branding agencies that actually get involved. This is a long process. It just does not happen overnight. So if the communication that the entrepreneur wanted is actually reaching to the end consumer, then the branding agency has done a beautiful or a great job at it. So what could be some of the brand values examples? It could be reliable, quality assured, widespread, value for money, convenience, etc. So when you think about your brand, what are your brand values? What brand values could you attribute? Could you say that whenever um, you deliver a product to the customer, the quality is always assured, you give the best quality? Or are you actually present in so many locations that your brand is widespread? Or are you actually providing quality for money? Right? So think about all these things. Once you probably sit down, then you can jot this down. Then you can think about how do I communicate this to my customers? So example, we have all seen this logo. These are the golden arches of McDonald's. So whenever you look at this logo, the first thing that comes to your mind is French fries and Coca-Cola, right? So that is what um, McDonald's has been able to communicate to you that you will always be able to get uh, fresh fries. You will be always be able to get Mac burger. You will be able to get a good can of soda in McDonald's. Okay. Now that we have understood what branding is and what branding values are, let us look at how do we build a successful brand? So to um, build a successful brand, there are four keys. First is be authentic, right? So whenever you are trying to do uh, anything in life, you want to build a relationship, it can be with your customer or it can be with people around in the society. You always have to be authentic. If you are not authentic, then people actually can see right through it. You might think that um, I am doing a very good um, thing by flattering people, by telling people only things that they want to hear. But actually, people are very smart nowadays. People can actually write, see through right you when you're not being you. Right? So always, if you're trying to build a brand, 
then don't try to be somebody that you are not. Be always authentic. Number two, be relevant. So if you have launched a brand 10 years ago and you're still using the same means of communications even now, then you're not being relevant anymore. The platforms have changed. So your communication has to change according to that. The, uh, you know, the customer values might have changed. People uh, who were willing to actually wait uh, until new stock comes into stores. They used to uh, book televisions, you know, uh, months and years before. Um, but now they're not doing it anymore. They cannot even wait for 24 hours once they place an order with Flipkart and before it comes to their home. Right. So the, rel the relevancy of the product has changed for your customers. So if you have not been able to change your brand, then um, it is not going to be a successful brand anymore. Number three, consistency. Whatever you do with your brand, it has to be consistent. So when you promise something, you have to deliver it. Right. And you just don't do it once or twice. And then you say, OK, now people trust me, so I don't have to do this anymore. That is not right. You would have to consistently deliver on your promise. Number four, commitment. So if you have committed something to your customer, nowadays it is very easy for people um, to leave a review. It could be on a social media platform. It could be on, uh, on Google or it could be on your own website. People are more willing to leave reviews. So if you do a bad job at things, then um, be sure that they will definitely leave a negative review. So be always committed to the brand. If you're not able to commit to the brand, be out there, communicate about it to your customers so that they will understand. Now, let us look at one example as to why brands are important. We all know this brand, Coca-Cola, right? Coca-Cola is the world's leading brand. It's the world's number one software company. Uh, it's the world's number one soft drinks company. And it has a market value of $175 billion. But of the $175 billion, there is only one asset, okay, which actually um, has a market value of $75 billion. And this one parameter or this one factor, which has an attribute of $75 billion, is not the secret ingredient that goes into Coca-Cola's preparation, right? It is the brand. Can you believe it? It's not even the secret recipe that goes into preparation of the Coca-Cola, but it's the brand which takes up $75 billion. So creating a brand is very, very important. Why? Because it also adds to your goodwill. If you're planning to sell it tomorrow, then um, not just the invoices that are there on the books, but the buyer will also look at the goodwill of the brand and there is some value attributed to it. So be sure that you create a brand uh, which has some goodwill. In this context, I would also like to share an example with you. Um, just a month ago, I met one of the guys um, who owns a pizza joint in Hyderabad and he has around 10 stores. So um, this person, he has been operating for like uh, probably one year now and uh, he called us because he wanted to create some visual content, some photography for his pieces. And when I went to him, I also asked him about what digital marketing he was doing, how was he building his PR, what marketing efforts he was doing. He was very evasive about it. And um, when we told him um, that for a professional shoot, we'll be charging so much, he was really not happy with it. He wanted something, um, you know, very simple, which was not very um, artistic. He just wanted something like uh, probably a mobile shoot or something like that. But we suggested that since you are building a brand, get a proper, uh, you know, professional shoot done, get some uh, digital marketing in place, get your marketing right, because it will add to your PR as well. It will add to your brand. There, have, there are other pizza joints, like Domino's is the number one uh, pizza company in Hyderabad. And they always keep marketing. So if you have ever gone to Domino's and experienced it, every Wednesday, if they have your mobile number, you would get an SMS from Domino's regarding the one plus one offer. Every Wednesday, every week, without fail, they send out that um, advertisement, right? 
So when I to- told him that probably you should invest more in your brand, he was evasive about it. Now, a month later, of course, we did not work with him. A month later, I came to know that another company has actually approached him and they said they were willing to buy off his brand, all the 10 stores that they were operating in, for a total amount of one crore rupees. You might say that's a good thing, right? He did not invest anything in the brand, but he's still going to get one crore rupees if he sells it off. But the worst part was he actually invested 3.5 crores in that business of his own money. And the brand that actually came down to buy his company off was willing to only pay one crore rupees. And the reason that they gave him was you don't have enough goodwill in the market. So giving you one crore rupees is like a huge amount for us because you don't even have any goodwill. Of course, you have 10 stores, but people are not actually walking into your stores. You are bleeding, right? So giving you one crore is the best that we can do. What a pity, right? He has invested an year or three years of his life. He's invested 3.5 crores of his own business, of his own money. He has been working hard to manage all the 10 stores. But at the end of the day, nothing mattered. It was just that there was not enough goodwill of the brand. So nobody was willing to pay more than one crore rupees. So think about it. If you don't invest in your brand today, tomorrow, if you are planning to exit, then um, you will end up with a lot lesser amount than what you have actually invested in it. So be wise, brand properly. Now, coming back to brand benefits. In both our examples, the Coca-Cola example and the pizza joint example, we have understood a little bit about why branding is important. But let us put it out in points. Brand benefits. There are five brand benefits. Number one, it builds customer loyalty, right? So for example, if you have been traveling as part of my IT career, I used to travel across the world. And if you are a traveler like me, then um, in a new country, wherein you don't know anything about the country, you don't know about the local cuisine, um, and you have specific food habits that you still want to stick loyally in another country, if you see a store wherein you have already experienced it at home. For example, let us say you, are, you see a McDonald's store or uh, you see Subway or you see Cafe Coffee Day outside, then you will feel very comfortable walking into that store without thinking about it twice because you know what sort of uh, menu they have, you know what sort of food they will be able to offer. You can trust that brand because you already have experienced it back home, right? So that is nothing but customer loyalty. You are still willing to go and get into a store that you already know back home because of what? Because of the brand. Because you know that McDonald's will serve you that one burger and those French fries and you will, your stomach will be full. Right? So one of the brand benefits is building customer loyalty. Number two, increases value. Like I said, in the example, in the pizza joint example, the entrepreneur actually invested 3.5 crores in his, in the business, but nobody was willing to pay him 3.5 crores or more than that, right? When you build a brand, when you have been working at a business, then when you're trying to exit, you would actually expect to be paid more because you have worked all these years, but nobody was willing to pay for him. Why? Because he did not have enough brand goodwill. So if you have a proper brand built, then the brand, one of the benefits could be increasing the value if you ever want to exit it out. Number three, allows you to charge higher prices. As an entrepreneur, if you are providing the best service out there, then you would always want to make the most money out of it, right? Because at the end of the day, you are in business to generate revenue for yourself. In the business is not about charity. It is about the goods and services that are being uh, exchanged, right? So if you build a brand, you will be able to always charge higher prices. One best example is Apple. Apple's products are not better than Samsung. Apple's products are not, uh, uh, the comp- uh, Apple's laptops are not 
rate, uh, but still they are able to charge highest values. Why? Because they fall under Apple brand and people trust Apple brand. They think the technology is much more better in an Apple product, right? They think that whether it is the right thing or not, nobody knows. So a brand allows you to charge higher prices. Number four, builds market share. If you are ever planning um, to get out of this business, then something that you work towards is building enough market share. So when there is a competitor of yours, you can always compete with them. You always win in that race, right? So building a brand also builds market share. Number five, easier to launch new products. Again, in the classic example of Apple, Apple started um, with what? Apple started with an OS and then they started building iPad. Then they started building um, a laptop, right? Um, then they started building iPads, then mobiles. So they started launching new products, but everything under the same brand umbrella of Apple. So whenever, uh, if the brand is strong, if people trust that brand, if people think that, okay, this brand will give me uh, quality for my money or this is the best product out there. Um, but, so when you launch a new product, people will be more willing to um, actually buy and try it out because they trust the brand. The new product may be up to the mark or not, but at least those few uh, first customers will always be willing to try it out because of the brand. Okay, now that we have understood what branding means, what are the brand values, what are the brand benefits, examples of uh, some brands, let us look at five steps for brand building process. So how do you build a brand? If you are a business owner, you have attended this webinar because you want to understand about why branding is important and how do I build the brand at the end of the day, right? If I just give you all gyan about branding, why it is important, it just does not make any sense. You also need to understand how you can build it by yourself. So the first step in building a brand is to define the brand. Okay, when you say define the brand, how does it link to your overall business? What are your brand drivers? What are your core values? So when you define a brand, you have to first think, what do I want to do with it? Right? And what, so when people when what do I want to communicate with this brand? When actually my customer looks at it, what does he have to feel? This could be both emotional and functional. So if I look at an Apple product, my first thought process is it will be easy for me to start designing if I have an Apple product, right? Because Apple always used to target towards designers. They said um, MacBook is always a best option if you are a professional designer because you could do so many things with it. So if I am a designer as well, I would think whenever I look at um, Apple product, I would think, yes, this is useful product for me because that is the way that the brand has communicated to its core audience. So when you are trying to build a brand as well, first define what you want your brand to stand for, right? That is defining the brand. Number two, position the brand. Once you define the brand, then you would have to think about where do I position this specific brand? right? Who is my target audience? What should customers think about it when they see my brand? What does my brand promise? So coming back to identifying target audience, identifying target audiences, who is the right customer for my brand, right? For example, Apple. Apple has always uh, talked about um, first movers or uh, people who were willing to experiment with their products, right? So their target audience has always been tech savvy people who were ready to start um, experiencing, who were ready to experiment with a new product, who wanted to experience something else, who always thought themselves as different from other people, right? These people are also called as nerds. So Apple always wanted to position its brand as a product for the nerds, right? So if, when you think about your brand, who do you want your target customers to be and what are their values? Can you align their values with your core functional values? In that case, you can build a better brand. 
again what is your brand promise so brand promise so for apple it is always that they would be technologically first their products are always technologically evolved that is a brand promise that they can, they they don't always say um, that we are a cheap brand or we are more accessible or we can do this or that for you they always say that if you want a better product if you want a technologically um, improved product then apple is where you go to buy it so that is their brand promise that is why their products are always costlier because they have never said that it would be cheaper right so they are still fulfilling their brand promise so what is your uh, brand promise that comes under positioning of the brand number 3 express the brand so now that you have defined the brand you have positioned the brand you have to talk about it what is the brand what is the name of the brand what is the identity identity could be logo tagline etc right so um sit down think about it build a brand name and start with the identities and whenever you talk about identities and if you are so there are different formats for logos that we can use one is um a type format so word format right so if you look at our uh, logo which is branding by pixels it is all a uh, word format there are no pic pictorial depictions there it is just a word branding by pixels right similarly um, some other logos have colors in it like mcdonald's logo that we just saw it is golden yellow color so whenever you think about creating a logo with um, colors you should always from uh, you should go to an experienced graphic designer who can firstly create that logo for you and whenever you go to him he will also give you uh, some type fonts or uh, the color uh, numbers so if you are using more than one color he will specifically tell you this is the this is the color uh, number for you so that whenever you are printing it out you should be able to uh, tell this to the printer so that they don't change the color at the end of the day um your logo should be consistent your colors should be consistent your tagline should be consistent right so that is where expressing the brand comes into picture number 4 awareness of the brand awareness of the brand is about communicating both internally and externally so when you say communicating internally internally comes um, internally means your employees your vendors should actually understand what you are trying to do with the brand right for example if you are planning to start a plumbing business and you want to work with different plumbers now um, and your core vision for the brand is plumbers always overcharge and customers we cannot do anything about it because we just want the problem to be fixed we cannot do anything by ourselves right we cannot fix it by ourselves so whatever the plumber asks we generally pay that and customers always have this thought process in mind that this fellow is overcharging me but i'm not able to do anything about it but you as a brand owner you want your brand to stand for not overcharging you want to only charge customers whatever is right for that particular service so that is the uh, vision that you have for your brand but you don't communicate it to your employees who are the plumbers right so this employee there are different touch points that the customer has with the brand right first is there there could be an uh, they could visit your website that is one touch point number 2 they would be calling you um, for your service because they have a problem they want you to take care of the problem that is a second touch point third touch point if your plumber is actually going to their house to fix the problem that is the third touch point number 4 how the sale is being done and at the end of the day is the customer happy or not that is the fourth touch point right so your brand should consistently perform across different touch points that is the whole point of creating a brand so when you think about communicating both internally and externally it is not just about what you want your customers to think when they talk about your brand or when they see the brand it is also what your employees and your vendors think and how they communicate with the customers right so if you are thought process and your vision was to that i should not overcharge my customers and your employee or the plumber goes to the customer's house and he overcharges him then your brand promise is gone it is not being fulfilled 
Why? Because the plumber didn't know that uh, you as a business owner had this vision in mind. And who is responsible for that? You are responsible for it because you were not able to communicate properly. And the fifth step is measure the brand. Okay, great. You have defined the brand. You have positioned it. You have expressed it. You have also created awareness of the brand. But now what? What is the end goal? Right? What is the result of all these activities? This is lots of work. Trust me, it is not easy to build a brand. So what is the end goal? The end goal is to measure the brand using brand equity. So how do you measure the brand? Like in the pizza joint example, the entrepreneur was a huge failure because he did not invest enough in the brand. So his brand equity was lesser than what he expected them because market was not ready to pay him even whatever he has invested in the brand, right? So measuring the brand equity is the end goal for any brand building exercise. Okay, now that we have understood all about brand building, we have also known the five steps of brand building. Let us look at as an a 10 example. Let us build a brand, right? So let us build a smart watch. We all of us know about smart watch, right? But um, how did, let us say you, if you would have to build everything from scratch, you have to build a smart watch, which nobody has ever experienced before. Right? So how do you go about it? So first, whenever you are trying to launch a new product in the market, you would have to first understand who my target audience is. See, whenever you are um, planning to start a business, whenever you are planning to launch a product, you are planning to do it for some reason, right? It is not just out of the blue that you wanted to start something because you wanted to do it. No. You as a business owner, if you are providing a service, then the, at the end, other end of the table, there should be a person who is willing to pay for it, right? But how do you actually build around that? By first defining a target audience, okay? So who are your target audience? Your target audience for a smartwatch are early adopters, tech savvy, and multitaskers. Right? Who would want a smartwatch? Not everybody would want a smartwatch. And who are the people who are willing to actually pay and test it out? They are called as early adopters. And that is where Apple always used to target early adopters. Early adopters are the people who are willing to experiment with new technology, who get all excited with a new technology, who would really, really want to pay for it and experiment with it. Right? They are also called as nerds, tech-savvy people, people who are very good with technology. If you build something, um, if you build a very technologically high-end product and you give it to a person who was born in the late 1980s, will he be able to use it? Maybe not, right? Because he is not the correct audience for your product. So your product audience for a smartwatch should be tech-savvy. They should be comfortable with using technology. They should be able to adopt quickly to technology. And multitaskers, why would you want something, anything smart, right? We have smartphones, we have smart tablets, everything is smart nowadays, why? Because we are running around, we have lots of things to do. We want to be um, able to do multitasking, right? So your target audience are these, you have defined the target audience. Now coming to the mission statement. It is very well known as the why. So if you um, have children around you, um, you have your own children or you have your cousins or nieces or any small children around you and you generally have a conversation with them, they always start with the why, right? So if you give them a chocolate, and then they ask you for another chocolate and you say no. Then they will say why? Then you tell them, okay, um, if you eat chocolates, then your teeth will go rotten. Then they will ask you why? So this constant, uh, this constant um, you know, questioning of why is what children do. And at the end of the day, you feel so tired answering their questions that you give up and give them that extra chocolate, right? 
that is again a strategy that is being used in marketing which is called as a mission statement and we call it as the famous why when you are planning to do something entrepreneurship is a lonely journey and it is extremely hard to build a product so if you are planning to start something then always ask this question why why do i have to go through this process is it better if i just go and join in a job or is it better if i stick with my product and if i stick with my product what is the reason that i'm sticking with my product is it just money because if it is money then that is not the right goal for you money will come eventually but first of all product should stand the test of time right so that is where the why comes into picture now for your smart watch what could be the why the smart watch lets you multitask on the go so you can be the best version of yourself you want people to experience the best version of themselves and that is why you are saying please use my smart watch and that is the why for my smart watch right number 3 brand drivers brand drivers what are the functional and emotional um, parameters which are experienced by the customer if i buy your smart watch what are the functional uh, things that i can do maybe i can check my emails maybe i can do a video call maybe i can uh, get all my notifications of whatever uh, is happening on the social media on my smart watch so i can always be informed that could be a functional aspect what could be an emotional aspect emotional aspect i can always be in touch with my friends i can always be in touch with my family i can always be in touch with my um circle social circle right using smart watch so that could be an emotional aspect coming to the fourth brand home you can create a house of brands right like if you look at procter and gamble procter and gamble has around uh, probably 130 products underneath it you may not even know if you pick up a brand uh, product whether it is procter and gamble's product or not but still all of them fall under procter and gamble's umbrella right so you can create an umbrella so when you are building a product or when you are building a brand what is the value proposition or the brand proposition so when you say value proposition if i buy this smart watch what does it mean what is the value that it is adding to my life right so that is called as the value proposition whenever i communicate with your brand what is the brand proposition what is the value that you are adding to my life one of the things that is adding value to your life could be the brand promise you can always get quality whenever you um, buy this brand or whenever you communicate with this brand you always know all your problems will be taken care of because their support team is awesome right that could be one of the value proposition then visual identity of the brand again like i said you have to define the brand you have to express the brand so how do you express the brand it is using logos and taglines so that these are pictor this could be pictorial formats or this could be text formats whenever people look at it they immediately know what that represents that it represents your brand it represents your product and if you buy from that brand then you know that the quality of the product will be assured then you have the brand touch point promise so for your smart watch what could be the brand touch points it could be your employees who are working in the actual store your vendors who are supplying materials for you so you can construct the smart watch and at the end of the day your customers right these are all the touch points that your brand will be in um, contact with so what value addition can you do at each stage of these touch points consistent brand identity across channels offline and online like i said you have to maintain a consistency if you are planning to build a brand right it it has to be both in the offline world and the online world the way that you communicate should be consistent even if you are are putting an ad in a newspaper that is an offline media or if you are putting a post on a social media platform the communication should always be consistent so that people when uh, and some brands have a different kind of communication style that whenever you look look at the communication style you can actually attribute the brand for example amul 
right amul has a small cartoons that are placed in all newspapers every day right and they talk about the current topic the current event that is happening they don't talk about amul brand anymore they have the small girl who represents amul and then they have some other text but when whenever you look at the small girl you understand that it is an amul brand right and amul brand is talking about the current events so they have a different style so you can also create your own style but whatever style you create should be consistent both in the offline and the online worlds and then brand equity logo to brand identification brand promise customer loyalty so brand equity is nothing but your brand should be able to easily be identified by your customers your whenever people think about your brand they understand that there are certain brand promises and that you are good at fulfilling them your customers have loyalty to you so that um, if somebody else launches a similar product they immediately don't run off to the other person to buy it off from him okay great so with this we have completed the first part of the presentation which is brand hope that was helpful if you are into business both b2b or b2c always 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 start with building a brand don't just start um, selling creating a product and selling it off first build a brand and then build a product and then start selling it off think about the long term okay don't think about the short term if you are an entrepreneur then um, it is not the journey is not as rosy as it is being shown uh, on social media or on televisions youngest entrepreneur and nothing of that sort okay even the youngest entrepreneur still has to work 18 hours a day still has had rough days still has had um, to work for 10 to 15 years even mark zagerberg who is a billionaire right he has started it um he has started his business since when since he was 18 years old now that he is 27 years old he's a, he's a billionaire now but it has taken him so many years to get there right so it is a very difficult journey so don't just do random things think about it strategically and build a brand and you will be very thankful that you took the time out to build the brand now coming to the second part of our presentation which is personal branding so what is personal branding right what does that even mean it we are talking about branding and we understand that the products are being branded right but what is personal branding personal branding is the practice of people marketing themselves and their careers as brands so it is about people marketing themselves and then you may say i don't want to build a personal brand for myself i don't want to be a piece of soap right only soaps need branding i don't need branding i am just great the way i am if you think like that then i am sorry to say that you are absolutely wrong everybody of us needs personal branding now that we are in an age where people before even they talk to you they will first google you right that is the kind of environment that we are in you may tell me 100 good things about you but how do i know whether whatever you are telling me is true or not i cannot take the risk of just coming down and meeting you face to face and even if i meet you face to face i never know whatever you are expressing is the right thing or you are just flattering me or you are not being authentic right so the first thing people nowadays are doing are googling about you they are also going to social media platforms they are searching about you and then if you check out as a genuine person only then they are willing to meet you in the offline world so that is where personal branding in the 21st century is very very important and especially if you are a professional like you are a doctor you are a dentist you are a photographer you are an artist or um, you are a life coach or if you are a student also personal branding is very very important for you if you want to be one step ahead from all the other people around you from all those other people who are your competitors then you have to brand your person that is you differently okay 
So personal branding is essentially the ongoing process of establishing a prescribed image or impression in the mind of others. So again, like in branding, we were talking about creating an image in the customer's mind. Similarly, personal branding is about creating an image in the mind of others, not what you think about yourself. You may think I am great, but I don't need personal branding. I'm just awesome the way I am. I'm so smart. I'm so handsome. I'm so knowledgeable. I am the best person that was ever there in the whole earth. Great. But that is what you think about yourself. That may not be the same thing that the other person may be thinking when they meet you or when they talk to you, right? But how do you project that image of yourself onto others? That is where personal branding comes into picture. Okay. Again, like I said, your brand is a perception or image maintained by somebody other than you that describes the total experience of having a relationship with you. When I talk about having a relationship with you, don't please get into the uh, other relationships like girlfriend, boyfriend and all of that. that. That is just one relationship, right? If you have a boss, then the relationship between a boss and an employee is also a relationship. It is also a genuine relationship. If you have a colleague, then you both have a relationship because you are working in the same company. It is not a gender relationship like a between a boy and a girl, right? If you are friends, that is a relationship as well. So branding, personal branding, how you carry yourself, what you project, what people think about you all come under personal branding. Now, the first and most important thing, just like in branding, the first thing that we defined was brand values. Right. So similarly, personal branding, you need to define those first three cornerstone words, those three words that define you. Right. For example, if, if I have to define myself, I am smart, I am hardworking and I am a very um, I am a lady who loves marketing. Right. Those are the three traits that I would want people to define whenever they think about me. And that is how I would define myself as well. What are your three words? And how can you actually, so you have been yours, with yourself since probably uh, 20 years, like since you were born, you have been with yourself, right? So how do you define yourself? Right? You may think that um, you have certain traits that you think about yourself, but do people actually project that? Do people actually think about it when they're conversing with you? So first of all, sit down. This is a uh, homework assignment for all of you guys who have been attending this session. Sit down at a quiet place, take a pen and paper and start jotting it down regarding what you think about yourself. If you think you're smart, put the word smart. If you think uh, you're intelligent, put the word intelligent. If you think you're hardworking, put the word in hardworking there. So create a list of attributes that you think you have in yourself and that you want to project, right? That you want to project. Don't think about, um, don't honestly write all the descriptions about yourself. Nobody is actually interested in all of that. But whatever you want to project, only that. You may be lazy, but you don't want to write lazy, right? That is not what you want to project. Right. So all the positive attributes that you think you want other people to think about you. So write those words down. Next, have a conversation with your best friends. Like, right, take them to coffee and then ask them. So you have been with me like you might have friends who have been with you all your school years and now they have grown up with you. Right. So you can always ask them, what do you think about me? Not just in a jo jovial way, way, but in a serious way. What do you think about me when you talk to me? Uh, if you have to introduce me to a stranger, how would you introduce me? They would tell you some things. I would tell uh, the stranger that this is my best friend. Uh, we were together. Uh, he's a very smart guy. He's an intelligent fellow and all of that, right? But... Only when you ask them, you would know what they think of you. So create a list of what your best friends talk about you, right? Think about you. Then also have a conversation with your parents. They have been raising you, so they know more about you than you do. Have a conversation with them also. Ask them, so what do you think about me? 
if again if we were strangers and you just met me what would you think the the way i'm conversing with you or the way i present myself what do you think of those attributes can you give me some adject adjectives that i can use so make a list of that also so you have three lists now one the list about yourself that you have written by yourself number two what your best friends have talked about you number three a list of what your parents are saying about you if you have a peer group if you have people that you are working with if you have um, people that you are studying with then also talk to them about what they think about you how you project yourself when they first met you what was the impression that you left on them so once you have these four lists sit down and then you analyze these four lists there would be some definitely similar words across all these four lists that i'm sure of you could use those words as your cornerstone words these are the words that define you as a person okay so the output may be what you want it to be or maybe something that you don't want it to be but you can always change yourself but first of all you have to define what those cornerstone words are right so this is an assignment homework assignment for all of you guys sit about it think about it and then uh, use that for your personal branding experience right so let us look at some personal branding fundamentals number 1 so this is same with whatever the branding fundamental was there we said the brand should be authentic here we are saying the person should be authentic so what does that mean so you as a person may be a very sarcastic human being and may be a very negative human being when you are with your close friends but when you go and meet strangers you may be entirely different you may be the most positive person out there you may be the most jovial person out there which is not your inherent character right so once they <coughs> get to know you they will think oh when i met him he was so positive but now he is actually talking like this so don't leave that impression be authentic be yourself wherever you are otherwise people nowadays are too smart they will immediately catch you they they will immediately see through you so don't make that mistake be authentic number 2 personal branding fundamentals number 2 get a professional headshot done if you are actually a professional who wants to build a business if you are a student who is looking uh, forward to a corporate placement then don't just take a selfie and put up your picture you know in your linkedin profile um in your resume whenever you send it to hr please don't do that nobody actually likes it okay people want you before they take you into the corporate company they
if you are into um, social uh, sorry if you are into any kind of business then you have to definitely know what is the right social media platform for you okay if you are a business owner catering to b2b again like i said twitter and linkedin are the right platforms for you if you are a business owner catering to b2c then facebook and instagram are the right platforms if you are a student looking to build a personal brand then linkedin should have your complete profile with a professional headshot being done 